All right, folks, welcome back to another Budget Jam or Budget Bust. Today, I've got an amp that's debatable whether or not it's a budget amp. And that is, I have the Rockford Fosgate TM750X1BD. Um, this is the marine version of the T750X1BD. Um, I'm actually planning on installing this bad boy in my boat here in a couple of weeks. And this amp retails for $399. Outside of the parameters of this channel of being less than $300. Um, so you're asking, well, why am I continuing on with this video? Well, it's not just selfish purposes. I was actually able to negotiate a deal with a local retailer. Um, that's ABT, who is pretty big. You can order from them national, uh, nationwide. And... I got this down for 290 and that kind of interested me because one of the things that's interesting about this amp is that for its ratings, which is right here on the box, it is rated at 500 watts by one at 4 ohms, but also 750 watts by one at 2 ohms and 1 ohm. So for those people that are worried about impedance rise, these power series amps might be a good choice for you. So we're going to find out what this amplifier actually does here today. We're going to unbox it and we're going to strap it up to the amp dyno and see just how much power this amp does. First thing I can tell you based on the box, this thing has got to be tiny. So enough of me talking. Let's jump in. Let's see what we get here for 290 bucks from Rockford Fosgate. Uh, first, we have our birth sheet. So this one is rated to do uh, 969 watts at 1% THD, and that does not tell me, oh, that's at 1 ohm. So 969, 1% THD, 1 ohm, uh, 2 ohms, 926, and 4 ohms, 531. Let's see what we actually get when we strap it to the dyno. And next thing you get, uh, these are your plugs for your RCA. Um, they do not have RCAs built right into the amp. You got to use this little adapter plug. Now the amp. We have a setup disc. I'll get into why you need that here shortly. And that's pretty much it. You have a installation booklet. And that's it. That's all you get. Um, and this amplifier itself here is tiny. Look at this thing. So we'll do the old above average man hand test and I could palm this. I could probably uh, slip it in my pocket if I wanted to. I have giant sized pants. But how big is this? It is lengthwise including the power terminals about eight and a half inches long. Just under five inches wide. About four and a half inches wide and about an inch and a half tall. So this can pretty much go anywhere. You can go under your seat. These can go on a motorcycle. As I said, they were these are this is a marinized version, so this is made to go on a boat in the water. Um, kind of crazy. So let's take a look around the amp and let's see what you get. Okay, along this side of the amplifier, you have your power, ground, and remote connections as well as your speaker outputs. Now, you might be saying, okay, these just look like little spades. What, what do I connect into there? Well, you have these removable plugs that just insert like this. So you just go in there, you plug them in, and these are actually your terminals here. So you'll see that in a lot of uh, smaller amps, or especially marine amps, um, that are of a higher quality, in which case, uh, you know, if you need to move the amp around, you could quickly disconnect the power and ground. Um, there is an issue though that I see here. First, these plugs are only 8 gauge max. Now this is a 750 watt amp and you're going to be really pressed to squeeze 8, 8 gauge in here and then right next to it is the ground. So you got to be really careful. You can't use an 8 gauge reducer. You have to use 8 gauge raw wire. A reducer won't fit. I've already tried. And they're so close. One little errant strand of copper could, uh, could short everything out. So 
be careful when hooking one of these up. Um, bright side is that's the same size connection for the speaker outputs, but it's really, really thin in here. So no summed mono four outputs to dual subwoofers on here. Now, granted, it's a marine amp. You're probably not going to have more than one sub on a boat anyway, but just keep that in mind. Along this side of the amplifier, you have your input for your remote bass knob and over here for your RCAs. The RCAs are a plug, as we talked about earlier, and it just goes in just like that, snaps right into place. But, you know, here's the thing. For 290 bucks, Rockford Fozzie, can you at least throw in the little $8 bass knob and not charge me 30 bucks to buy one separately? Come on, man. Come on, man. Um, over here, you actually do have dual fan in dual fans. So because this is so small and if you're beating away on the water or on a motorcycle or somewhere confined space, uh, you need these fans to keep this little amp cool. Along the top of the amplifier, you have your settings. So here is your gain input. Right there is your punch EQ, which is adjustable from 0 to 18 dBs at 45 hertz. Here is your low pass crossover adjustable from 250 hertz down to 50 hertz. And here is your infrasonic filter, aka a subsonic filter. Now it doesn't tell me anywhere in the specs or on the manual, well, what lack of manual, um, what that's set to. I'm going to assume it's about 25 hertz. That's typical what I see on a switch. So I don't know. Um, but. Let's just, let's just go with 25 hertz, folks. And up here, see, this is really nice. This is what I really like about this amp, and this is where I think the value comes out. You have a clip indicator here, and with the clip indicator, I mean, it's going to act pretty much similar to a, a DD-1, uh, you know, that, that you've seen in some of my other videos um, from SMD, which is the distortion detector. Um, but it also will do the, the full clip indicator. It'll do if it's just in distortion. And what's also nice, this does it whether the signal is clipped or distorted coming in or if your problem is going out. So if you have too much like output, your gain could be too high. If it's, if it's the in, perhaps you have your deck too high. So this is pretty nice. It's going to be able to tell you there. And it's going to be able to tell you if you've got a soft clip or a hard clip. So if it's blue on here, blue is going to be more of, okay, it's distorted, but it's not really like a full hard-on square wave um, clip. That's if it lights up red. So same here. You can light up blue or red for either a soft clip or hard clip. So very, very nice. Okay, nothing left to do here but to take this Rockford Fosgate TM750X1BD and strap it up to our amp dyno and let's find out how much power this little amp puts out. Does it do what the burst sheet says? Does it do more? Does it do less? We're gonna find out. We're gonna go from four ohms down to one ohm and see how accurate Rockford Fosgate is with this.
Okay, final thoughts here on the Rockford Fosgate TM750X1BD. As you saw on the amp dyno, holy shnikes. This little thing puts out some serious juice. Holy cow. I mean, did you see those one ohm dynamic numbers? That was, how much? How much? Almost 1700 watts dynamic on a 750 watt amplifier? That's the size of my hand? That is bananas. Absolutely bananas. So, is this amp a budget gem or a budget bust? Well, it's definitely a gem. Uh, I know it kind of is the, the stretch limit for what of, a lot of you guys want to pay for a 750 watt or a thousand watt amp, whatever you want to talk about this one in terms of budget. I mean, 290 bucks, I mean, on certified, you're looking at just under 29 cents a watt for um, what this thing puts out certified at one ohm. So, ugh. That's a little on the pricey side for some of you. But, on the flip, I mean, think about what this amp offers as well. Number one, it's gonna, if you have a one ohm subwoofer, it's gonna fight impedance rise. So, sometimes you will buy a, a 1400 watt amp and it'll put 800 watts out at two ohms. Well, this one does over 900 watts. So, this could hold up better in terms of your sound if you have an impedance rise from 1 ohm to 1.8 ohms, um, this one is a lot more consistent against some type of impedance or box rise. So you got to pay for that technology. Two, um, it comes with the uh, clip indicator. Now this isn't just like a regular light that just indicates clip. It's going to indicate a hard clip or a soft clip as well as where is the clip coming from? Is it coming from the input signal or is it the output of the amp? So that's worth money. Um, I figure a DD1 is about 150 bucks. You buy one of these, you don't need a DD1. Um, so that can give you a little bit of value on the amp as well. Plus two size factor. This one also is the marine version. Um, you can get the non-marine version for about 50 bucks less. So if I paid 290, you could probably talk that store into 240, 250 on that model. So for what this offers, this is a heck of a value. Um, so I like this amp. I was uh, planning on putting it on my in my boat beforehand, and it's still planning on going in my boat. And I've got the four channel version of this amp as well that we're going to check out in a couple of weeks. But till that time, that's all for me, folks. I got more amps to test. I'll see you next week. All right, just to give you a quick demonstration of the clip indicator, let's set this up. I've got it set up on the 81, the DD1 Plus mode. So this is the exact same that you'd be doing at home if you had a DD1 tool. So let's just adjust here. When we see the clip, so now you can see here we're doing a soft clip. You can see on the DD1, same thing, the distortion light is on. If I go further, you can see here, now we're at a hard clip out. If I take it right back down to no clipping, you can see there, now we're back to clean signal. So. About $150 worth of value right there on this amp.